Hertzberg was uh, largely known for um, the spectroscopy of gases, first of all, so this would be molecules and uh, atoms. And uh, then on top of that, we have to add that he, he uh, studied a lot of uh, free radicals. These are very reactive uh, gases or molecules and atoms that have what's called an unpaired electron. This is why they are so reactive. And these, uh, he was the first to study, for example, the absorption spectroscopy. Nobody had an idea what, uh, that a cell would be, basically that a single oxygen atom in a human body would uh, draw electrons from other uh, cells and therefore be harmful. This whole concept was developed much, much later. But again, um, we wouldn't even be there today if Herzberg wouldn't have uh, told us about the, the, or verified that the orbital levels are in fact the, the way they are. He was um, the person that was at the time likely the most famous spectroscopist in the world. And there were, of course, many others. In his years at the University of Saskatchewan, 1935 to 1945, this was right after the golden age of quantum mechanics, when all these uh, findings were new and all the rules and, and findings that were established basically every year could be for the first time um, found in experiments. And that is where, where he did most of his work. Of course, his work spans such a large range. So today, for example, when you look at the spectral range that everybody does spectroscopy, and I was quite amazed when I learned that he, his work spans uh, over very different ranges from um, uh, microwaves through infrared, through visible range, which we're all familiar with, through the um, ultraviolet. So this is very rare that a, a single researcher applies so many different techniques or so many different um, wavelength or energy ranges to the research. The first time I heard about Herzberg was actually, I remember when I laid on my bed on Sundays usually and I would go through the material of the week's uh, reading uh, that was necessary for me. So that's when I encountered the first time certain uh, molecules and, uh, that I didn't know at the time anything about and I discovered how these parameters um, like uh, the, the discrete energies and the orbitals, how all this that was then in the quantum mechanics at the same time taught to us, how this could be experimentally established. And so that's when I heard the name the first time. Of course, at the time, I only knew the name. Uh, I did not know where he ended up to, let alone that I would ever be at the same university. <laughs> yeah. His legacy lives on when you ask anybody, especially in the chemistry department, because of course, although he was a professor in the physics department, he uh, received the Nobel Prize in chemistry. And so I think he was a true, I find him an impressive person because he was, before all this was so fashionable, uh, today everything has to be interdisciplinary, but he lived it at an age when there was no uh, room for this actually. Uh, the U of S is uh, known for many people who do spectroscopy here. And the only nifty thing that we have today that uh, wasn't at his, uh, didn't exist at his time, are of course the synchrotrons. So while Herzberg was looking at the radiation coming, say, from uh, methylene or some free radicals and looked at the absorption of this, we do basically the same thing with the synchrotron. The only new thing is we have a much, much better and more powerful and also, of course, more expensive and more sophisticated source for the experiment. We have a synchrotron. He had to use uh, basically a white light uh, source. <laughs>